Palermo, Sicily. In this port city, a titan in the world of the shipbuilding industry is changing the face of the cruise business. Here, at one of the biggest dry docks in the Mediterranean, cruise ships are literally put under the knife. Some of the biggest vessels on the sea are cut in half and lengthened with an entirely new section, undergoing a new and complex process called jumboization. Palermo, Sicily, buzzes with the intoxicating mix of cultures that is a result of its domination by the Greek, Roman, Arab and Spanish civilizations over the last 3,000 years. Famous for the influence of mafia gangsters, it's also heralded across the globe for its beautiful beaches, breathtaking scenery and complex history. Palermo is not only a well-visited location for tourists, it is a major Italian trading port. Dawn rises at the construction site where Fincantieri engineers and ship experts are hard at work, moving tens of thousands of metric tons with near laser precision. We're cutting a ship that's 28 meters wide with a height of 50 meters from the bottom to deck 11 with a tolerance of just a few millimeters. Overall, the Fajoli Skidshoe system has raised 15,000 metric tons. After the enlargement of the ship, she will have an added capacity of about 500 passengers. Making even bigger ships is big business. This construction site is owned and operated by Fincantieri, which builds some of the largest ships across the globe. Fincantieri is in the business of constructing cruise ships, barges and military vessels. Here in Palermo, the company has pioneered a ship recycling program to meet demand for bigger and bigger vessels for the lucrative cruise industry. In the process, they have created a thriving new market for upgraded ships. The Renaissance program is a massive engineering project. The lengthening of four ships for Mediterranean Shipping Company, MSC. Each of these four ships, the MSC Armonia, Sinfonia, Opera and Lyrica, are undergoing the jumboization process, due to be completed by the end of 2015. The repairs and enlargement division that does what you can see behind me is just one of the divisions of Fincantieri. The shipyards here in Palermo have got the technique down to a fine art. The tools used to lengthen a ship, once cut in half, are massive movers. Skid shoes are like a hydraulic train that moves along steel rails on which the carriages are pushed horizontally by hydraulic levers acting on the sleepers. The skid shoe system is computer controlled and powered by diesel fuel packs. Each unit has the capacity to lift more than 1,000 metric tons. These particular skid shoes are a brand new design by the Fagioli Engineering Department. Before the jumboization process in the Palermo docks, Fagioli delivered into the yard no less than 22 skid shoes and built three rails to hold the wide hull of the cruise liner as it was being cut in two. The weight of the front half of the ship is supported by vertical cylinders and each skid shoe is able to support 1,000 tons. Getting the ship resting on skid shoes, however, involved a lengthy preparatory process. First, the dry dock had to be emptied using massive pumps. 
the operation took a whole day. Once the dry dock was empty, the skid shoes on which the ship's hull would rest and then be pulled apart, once sliced through, had to be positioned at the bottom of the dock and the electrical parts removed before the dock was flooded. The amazing process of jumboization starts with the creation of the new segment of the ship that has to be positioned in such a way that on the big day, the whole process goes according to plan. In May 2015, the Fincantieri yards successfully floated a new segment that was to be used to lengthen the MSC cruise liner Opera. The new segment, specially built to lengthen the ship, was first ceremonially floated, proving that it would contribute to the buoyancy of the lengthened ship, and then positioned in the dock where the massive Opera was to rest for the time of its complex, high-tech lengthening surgery. Filippo Oddo is the Fincantieri Yard Director and has been working on the jumboization of ships in Palermo, Sicily for decades. This dry dock has a capacity of 400,000 cubic meters. It's one of the biggest in the Mediterranean Sea. To give you an idea, its surface is four football pitches in length. It allows us to do this process that we're doing because it is wide enough, as I've said before, to allow the new section to be moved next to the ship. If it were narrower, we could not do this. This is the reason why we used this dock in the past as well, for this kind of operation. Once all was ready, the dock could be filled again, slowly so as not to move the skid shoes. As soon as the dock was full, the massive cruise ship could be sailed in. It was carefully positioned over the skid shoes and the dry dock was emptied once more. The ship and the new segment slowly sank to the bottom of the dock and the ship rested snugly on the skid shoes that would become its operating table. The first thing we did in the dock before the ship arrived at the dry dock was to put the skid shoes in place. That's before the ship arrived. At that point, the dock was flooded, so the skid shoes were submerged underwater. Thanks to this, the ship could be sailed into the dock and positioned onto the skid shoes as the dock was emptied. At this point, once it was settled, the dock was completely emptied of water until dry. This is an operation that has been done many times in these yards, a speciality developed here since the 1980s. The Palermo Yards has a lot of experience. The first enlargement process was done in 1980 to lengthen the Ville d'Anvers, and over the years, we have done several others. This enlargement process of the MSC Opera is the 27th operation in this series. The next will be applied to the last of the four MSC ships in the Renaissance program with the MSC Lyrica. It will close the cycle of the enlargement of MSC ships. The MSC Opera is 251.25 meters long and 28.8 meters wide, and when fully operational, hosts 2,199 passengers, offering 878 cabins and suites, luxury bars, a theater, a casino, shops, and many other attractions. With a new segment slotted into the middle, the capacity will increase to 2,700 passengers, which means that the ship will have to carry more food and offer yet more services. It is just one of the hundreds of massive cruise ships that grace the ocean waves, offering vacations to a market of 22.2 million people, with a turnover of $39.6 billion. It is a growing tourism segment but not without its own safety issues. 
On the 13th of January 2012, the giant cruise ship Costa Concordia crashed into the rocks off the island of Giglio in the Tuscan archipelago, leading not only to the world's largest ever ship salvage operation, but also to criminal and civil trials in which the safety of these mega ships was questioned. American lawyer John Eaves was one of the most outspoken critics of the cruise industry. You know, this industry has continued to just grow bigger and bigger and bigger. Costa Concordia is not even the largest ship. The largest ship uh, is a 6,000 uh, passenger vessel. The problem here is that, is that these ships are top heavy. They do this for profit because they know that they can sell a balcony space for much more than they can sell a space under or below the waterline. However, Fincantieri shipbuilders say tests on the structural integrity of the ships they have stretched prove that these ships are not weakened by jumboization. Safety is not an issue in ship lengthening. The lengthened ship has to satisfy strength criteria and resistance to stresses that it will encounter during its life at sea, exactly like any other ship. So from the resistance point of view, it makes no difference whether this is a lengthened ship or a ship originally built with these dimensions. Fincantieri has just delivered one of the ten largest cruise ships in the world to its client's Princess Cruises. The Regal Princess and other massive liners regularly come off the production line at these types of shipyards around Italy, from Trieste to Palermo. If you were to compare the construction work we do here at the Palermo site with the construction of new ships, the first thing you would notice is the timing. To construct a new ship from the very beginning to when it's ready to take to the sea with passengers would take at least two and a half years. Here we estimate, even when taking into consideration the work of engineers, that we can finish the ship in nine months. The jumboization process cuts down on costs, resources, and the years of labor that it would take to build new cruise ships. The current series of four cruise ships that Fincantieri is working on will cost 200 million euros when complete. That's just a fraction of the cost of building a single new cruise ship like the Regal Princess, which carries a price tag of up to a billion euros. Stretching an already massive liner takes equally huge lifting and pulling machines. This is the MSC Opera, one of the finest cruise ships to sail the seas, built in 2003 in Marseille, France. That just 10 years after launch, she is ready to be lengthened to host yet more passengers is an indication of how fast the cruise industry is growing. She is about ready to go under the knife here in the Palermo dry dock. Engineers and technicians are tightening the cables and positioning the skid shoes that hold her in place as preparations get underway. She is about 250 meters long, and after it's all finished with the lengthening process, she will be about 275 meters long. The new section is about 25 meters long. The beam remains the same, of course, and is about 29 meters. The MSC Opera is 59,058 gross tons, which refers not to its real weight, but to its cargo transport capacity, and so its potential commercial value while the ship's dry weight is the weight that the skid shoes have to lift and carry. Transport company Fagioli supplied Fincantieri with skid shoes and trailers to do this heavy lift job. The team on site is led by Loris Giovannini. The skid shoe system combines both lifting and transport. 
The lifting function is done with hydraulic jacks, which take on the vertical weight and are therefore able to provide vertical lift. The skid shoes also have another hydraulic system that allows them to apply a horizontal sliding action. Once settled in the dry dock, the engineers ordered it to be cut in two and prepared for the new midship block to be inserted. The new segment was built in the Fincantieri yards over the past five months so as to keep the opera working on the cruise routes while it waited for its mega stretch. Building a new chunk of ship to add to a vessel that was not built here was problematic. But before Fincantieri could begin construction on a new mid-section, they had to be absolutely sure of the ship's measurements and specifications. For this, they had to go back to the original plans and technical documents of the ship. Andrew Tozzo is the project manager in Fincantieri's Palermo site. He is looking over the vessel's technical documents to be absolutely sure of its measurements and specifications. He oversees the logistics behind the massive jumboization operation and makes sure that things run smoothly with over a hundred workers on the job. The operation starts with the examination of technical documents that were made by the ship builder. This is a ship that wasn't constructed initially by Fincantieri, so we have to ask the ship's owner for the technical documents in order to start the project. Obviously, before the ship arrives, the construction site has already completed construction of the ship's new section. And this new section is completed in every way. The ventilation system, the electrical wires, the cabins, the bathroom boxes. It will be completely finished so that in the end all we will need to do is connect the forward and rear faces of the new segment. Only once we've seen the documents can we start our part of the project. So on the basis of those documents, we've shaped our project. But before we can begin constructing the new section. And as we've said, tolerances can be compared to a single blade of grass against a whole football pitch. We can't just sort of guess or hope that the original plans are sufficiently precise and don't need to be verified before construction. So once we've put together the preliminary documents, we go on board to carry out final checks to validate the initial data and only then can we put together the whole project. The new section was fitted with all the necessary specifications so that the ship would be continuous from bow to stern. The new section was 25 meters long. Each ship gets a custom-made segment to insert. It's not just the metal plates, beams and frames that need to be cut. A cruise ship like the Opera is connected together by a maze of electric wires, hydraulics, plumbing and ventilation ducts that need to be sliced and rebuilt. In addition to cutting the beams and decks of the ship and the whole of the ship, all the wires that run throughout the ship are cut on the same line. The electrical wires will need to be reconnected so as to run through the entire ship, and they will be tagged with a code to enable this connection. We're talking about around 2,000 wires that are cut, marked, and then reconnected. The same happens with the pipes and the ventilation conduits. Like every ship, first the double keel was laid, and then, as it grew before the eyes of the engineers that built it, it assumed the qualities of a viable floating vessel. The new section was built to the same specifications as the ship it would go into. And, of course, the construction materials and tools were state-of-the-art, light and transportable. It took about five months to complete the segment with the utilities and furnishings that matched the rest of the ship. At the end of construction, 
it was duly blessed in the presence of the local authorities. The new section of the ship was fitted with the 2,000 electrical wires and plumbing pipes so that when the ship was extended an extra 25 metres, all of the systems would connect. The ship before enlargement has a gross tonnage of 60,000 tons, and after it's enlarged, it will be 65,000 tons. In terms of displacement, so the real weight of the ship will be from 30,000 tons to 32,500 tons. The whole extent of the increased weight comes from the new section. In that five months, the new section was completely outfitted with carpets, cabins, and bathrooms. The jumboization process is fast and efficient, so the ship can be returned to commissioned service as soon as possible. Also for the cutting of the ship, well, we can split it up into two phases. All the preparations for lighting the blowtorch and cutting the ship start when they remove all the fittings. When we say fittings, we mean the cabins, the beds, the mattresses, the bathrooms, the carpets. Once all these things are all removed, we get down to the raw metal of the ship. Once the ship was stripped to its iron frame, metal workers marked a precise plan for cutting the ship. By referring to the original technical documents of the vessel, experts measured the plating and beams in order for them to be cut with precise laser accuracy. A physical mark was made on the cutting line where metal workers would go in with blow torches and melt the metal apart. After this process, Opera was ready to be stretched, sitting snugly in the massive dry dock of Palermo, Sicily, resting on skid shoes that not only took the load, but also would later be used to move the bow and stern sections of the ship apart. The side of the ship, or actually all the flat surfaces, are cut semi-automatically. There are machines that are positioned so that the cut can be carried out automatically using normal acetylene torches, basically with the same acetylene blow torches that are very common. The curved parts of the ship, the round, bulbous parts, are cut by hand by experienced metal workers. Not all the areas that need to be cut are easily accessible. Some of the spaces are very cramped, but workers squeeze together and work for hours to finish the project on schedule. The number of people needed on the ship depends on how many people can work in the same space without interfering with each other. Also because the ship isn't just randomly cut. To be able to preserve the ship's structural integrity, it's cut in a special sequence. You can't just attack the ship's decks and plates simultaneously. So basically we have about 40 people all cutting a particular section at the same time, and that process should usually take around four days. As the sun set over the port of Palermo, the dry dock was a buzz with workers ready to perform a massive nighttime stretching operation. The MSC Opera was about to undergo an incredible upgrade in this huge dry dock construction site where it had been cut in half. Workers had verified the original technical documents of the ship and were about to proceed with the first stages of jumboization. After these checks, they could be certain that the new section would fit into place with absolute precision. The bow of the ship slid forward, ready for operations the next day. Once lengthened, she would be able to sail the waters with as much ease and with the same fluid dynamics and physics as she had as a shorter ship. The Italian company Fagioli works all over the world, providing heavy lifting services for both commercial marine and land operations. Fagioli and Fincantieri have taken on a massive lift project together to stretch a cruise liner. 
While jumboization sounds simple in theory, lifting and transporting these massive loads is a complicated job. Fagioli became involved in the jumboization process that consists of cutting the ship in half in two sections. One of those parts was then supported by the Fagioli skidding system that proceeded to move it 28 meters. This task was combined with another lifting system, the SPMTs, to insert the segment between the two extremities. Once this additional segment was added, the part of the ship that had been skidded 28 meters was then moved back. Four days after the ship was cut in half, the Fagioli skid shoes began their slow work. Engineers made sure that the skid shoes were working at the same speed, so as to provide an even force along the whole hull. It took six hours for a gaping hole to appear on the ship, where the new segment could be slipped in over the next day. When the cut was completed, we began operations and took the weight of the ship on the skid shoes, and the bow of the ship was lifted. With 22 skid shoes, with a thousand ton capacity each, in all, the Fagioli skidding system lifted 15,000 tons. The two most critical technologies that Fagioli provided for the jumboization project were the skid shoes and the SPMT transportation and lifting machines. SPMT stands for Self-Propelled Modular Transporter. They are specialized trailers that allow for the distribution of heavy weights over a large area. They are used worldwide for moving oversized, non-detachable superstructure cargoes. They have a powerful engine and hydraulic pumps and must have fast response for synchronized steering and lifting. Both systems that we've utilized in our operations here, the skid shoes and the SPMTs, guarantee all of the six degrees of freedom. So they allow obviously the horizontal advancement, the transverse movement, and also, as we've said before, vertical lift. SPMTs like these are widely used all over the world for this ability to position heavy loads with all six degrees of movement. It's one of the few technologies that can position these loads in tight spaces. A single operator can control the SPMTs, lifting and lowering heavy loads vertically as well as moving them forward in reverse and side to side. On top of all that, they allow for the rotation with respect to the three axes. All the different directions of movement are covered by the systems we are using. The purpose of all this is to make sure we can align the additional section with the MSC ship's sections with millimetric precision. SPMTs can carry a load of over 10 metric tons per square meter. This ability to hold a mass distributed over a large area is crucial when transporting loads so heavy they can crush the ground and crack the concrete underneath. We can move huge structures offloading very little weight onto the ground, so keeping within the boundaries of what the surface can sustain. Although the SPMTs can take a uniform weight distributed across a large area, they also have the ability to be taken apart so that each axle is its own individual unit. The separate units can be locked together from the front and the back to build an individual train-like transportation system. Or they can be locked side by side to allow for extra strength and stabilization. The SPMTs can be placed together, both one in front of the other and also side by side. For today's operations, we can put together 80 axles. 
The weight of the new section was too large for the SPMTs to be able to move it, so we chose the skidding system, utilizing the skid shoes. Meanwhile, the additional segment had a relatively low weight, so we could use the SPMTs alone. The MSC Opera sits in the dry dock of the bustling Italian port city of Palermo. The ship has been cut and the bow moved forward 28 meters. However, before Andrew Tozo gives the order to insert the new section, the yard takes advantage of the gap in the ship to fill it with fittings that otherwise would be too large to be inserted through the existing doors and portholes. An extraordinary refit is underway while the ship waits for its extra length of hull. The ship consists and is constructed as an iron, or rather a steel structure, and inside we find the fittings. So when the passengers arrive, they don't see the frame. They just see the carpets and go into their cabins. The objects that we put in the ship are mostly small objects, so they can be brought aboard the ship through any normal door or temporarily removed window, which is easy. Many of the ship's rooms are part of boxes that can be pre-built and pre-loaded to keep construction on the ship at a minimum. Then when we think about the boxes, such as the bathroom boxes, when the passengers enter, they'll have toilets, baths and sinks. These are built out of fiberglass and are put together on land. The yard inserts oversized items such as bathroom boxes at this stage. But even if other bulky units need to be mounted after the ship has been sealed shut, several different methods can be attempted. Here we have two possibilities. The first possibility, if we're doing an enlargement, is to see how much we can load when the three blocks of the ship are separate. If this is impossible, we'll make a temporary opening in the ship's hull. We'll punch holes in the ship's hull to load the material. The new section, prefabricated with all the utilities already installed, sat on eight massive trailers ready to be slipped in. Each trailer had 80 wheels that could pivot independently 180 degrees. The SPMTs could also lift the new section to ensure millimetric precision while sliding it in. The skid shoes had moved the bow forward 28 meters, enough for the amazing SPMT trailers to slide the new segment into the new space. Slowly, the massive wheels of the trailers began to move. Then, after a few meters, they rotated, bringing the new section in line with the rest of the ship. Everything had been pre-calculated. Like a gigantic tight curve, an error of judging distance could leave the new section stuck on the corner of the cut ship. Then the ship needed to be pulled back together again. Once again, the Fadjoli skid shoes began their Herculean task of moving the ship's bow back to where the stump section had been inserted. Once again, the operation had to be carefully monitored so that the skid shoes moved at the same speed, uniformly shifting the section to connect with the rest of the ship with millimetric precision. Here, the hydraulic elevators came into play to bring the edges of the sliced beams and hull to perfectly connect with the new segment. 
How do we attach two metal plates together? With the welder, obviously. But it could be an electrode or with a wire, depending on the technique being used. What's the maximum distance between these two plates that I can physically weld together? Only a few millimeters. So imagine cutting a ship that, as we've said earlier, is 28 meters wide with a height of 50 meters from the bottom to the 11th deck with a margin of error of just a few millimeters. In order for the welder's bead to connect each separate piece of metal, both pieces must be close together. The closer together, the cleaner and the stronger the welder's line will be. Obviously, the hull must be watertight, so the welds must be perfect all the way round the ship. Here in the bustling port city of Palermo, Fincantieri's shipyard workers are busy working on the jumboization of the MSC Opera. Now that the ship is once again a single unit, the furnishings and final utilities have to be completed. Once the whole of the ship is reconnected, that's to say the three parts of the ship, the bow of the ship, the new section and the stern, so once the hull and the decks have been put back together, we have to reconnect the plumbing, the electrical wires, and we have to test these systems that were taken apart due to the cut. The ship has been stretched with surgical precision, and now the workers can get on board and begin turning it into a functioning cruise liner again. The scars of recent surgery are visible, but soon the ship will get a new paint job as well. Most passengers will never know the cruise liner they are on was once a miniature version of itself. As the cruise industry grows and the ships get bigger, vital questions have arisen about the safety of thousands of passengers inhabiting these massive floating hotels far from the seashore. The second problem with these ships is that they are created, uh, designed to keep you uh, shopping on board, to keep you gambling on board, to keep you entertained and, and using the inside of the vessel. And so it becomes a labyrinth in an accident. Uh, these uh, ships uh, become a trap. The new hydraulic and electrical systems must be tested while the ship is in the dry dock before they are tested at sea. If the systems fail at sea, it could be very difficult for the company to return the ship to the dry dock to continue work. The shipbuilder's responsibility is to ensure the structural solidity of the ship, says the Fincantieri yard director, Filippo Otto. The plant is tested in the dock before the sea tests to ensure that the ship's main plant works. The structural aspect of enlarging a ship is the most interesting part of the process because we have to think about how we will be able to enlarge something and make it function as though it were originally built to that length. In the sea test, we have to verify the maneuverability of the ship which has changed due to its having been lengthened from its original size. The propulsion and control systems are tested. Speed tests are carried out to see how the ship behaves after the lengthening process. The ship returns to the dock, we complete the last activities, and the ship is delivered. There is still much work to be done to make the MSC Opera into a viable seagoing vessel. And only many weeks later is the ship ready for service. Fincantieri, meanwhile, has found a fast, low-cost solution to keeping cruise companies competitive by stretching ships and increasing the number of passengers they can carry. Heavy lift and massive naval engineering are probably the least known part of the cruise business. But they are a reliable support partner when it comes to keeping the industry afloat. 
noi andiamo ad aggiungerci un pezzo in più e quindi è, nece è necessariamente tutti We're adding another piece, so all the forces the that the sea exerted on the original structure will inevitably change. So the structural verifications are definitely the most challenging aspect of the process. So how did we commence? We try to keep the dimensions of the new section such that we can minimize the changes on the existing ship. In modo tale da minimizzare l'impatto sulla nave esistente. The thickness and amount of steel on the new stump section had to be enough to withstand the stress exerted upon it from the weight of the stern and the bow on either side. Then we made the structural modifications of the existing ship. We need to ensure that the new modified ship will have the same structural integrity as the ship had before. Before the ships of the Renaissance program can be used in service, they must undergo a series of sea trials to prove their strength and seaworthiness. This whole process, from the time the ship is put in the dry dock until we can send it back out again, lasts nine weeks. The stretched MSC Opera cruise liner will take to the sea as a completely rejuvenated ship, ready to take on the fierce competition. MSC Cruises has only 5% of the world's cruise markets, but now can offer bigger ships at a fraction of the cost of building a new one. After the enlargement of the ship, she will have an added capacity of about 500 passengers. So basically, the owner of the ship, after four enlargement processes, is able to embark as many passengers as if he had a new ship. It's a procedure that obviously brings results, but the tolerance or margin of error is very small. This whole jumboization process of the four ships in the series costs 200 million euros overall. This includes the cost of engineering for all four ships and customized work that needs to be done specifically on each ship. Overall, the project costs 200 million euros. The cruise ship industry may be controversial, but the technology behind jumboization is truly remarkable. The lifting and moving of tens of thousands of metric tons and cutting metal ships that are 50 meters tall utilizes the most modern of technologies. Recycling ships to make them brand new gives them added capacity to hold hundreds of extra passengers. That saves years of work and hundreds of millions of euros in resources. Although the tourism business will always need new cruise ships, undoubtedly the process of putting these ships under the knife will continue. Almost certainly there will be more jumboization. <laughs>